Former Miss South Africa and businesswoman Joan Ramukhoshi Madibeng has continued her role in service through her business and philanthropic work, and she believes that social issues pertaining to women, children, education, health remain the critical points to be addressed within our society. She's also started an event called Women, the Real Architects of Society, and this deals with a variety of issues that face women. Joan is also a member of the Social Cohesion Advocates working with the Department of Arts and Culture, and she joins us on the show to discuss her recent work as well as how one continues to carve meaningful legacy post Miss South African fame and success and football and a whole number <laughs> of things. Joan, pleasure to catch Thank up with you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Much appreciated. Thank you. And I'm surprised that you are not in football because actually that was one dimension of your life from a distance yes. I found interesting. I said, okay, now both Joan they are in football as yes. well. Oh, absolutely. Must have been a great experience. How long were you with the Sundowns for? I joined Sundowns, I think in 2004, after my reign as Miss South Africa. I was there for about five years. Mm -hmm. What a great experience. Mm. Great learnings from Mr. Patrice Mozebe. I mean, he is such a successful businessman and um, I was really privileged to have worked under his leadership. I've learned so much. I mean, I used to have meetings with him and say, wow, you know, your leadership skills, I truly admire. So really, and I've learned so much. Just their work ethic has been something that I really admire. Mm, you know, what is it if there's one takeaway from football, right? That you, away from... Away from the Mutsipa family, yes. but football itself, because I can tell you, it's got its own culture, right? Absolutely, the supporters. Yeah. The, just, you know, building a brand like Yama Melody Sundance. I mean, you find a brand, it was there already. So mm. all I needed to do was enhance it. Number one, the supporters, you're dealing with different dynamics when mm. it comes to mm. that. Mm. Um, just the actual culture of football, go stadium. You know, it's not about the hills anymore. It's mm. about mingling with the supporters, touching on the grassroot level, yeah, but you deal mm. with even social ills, funny enough, go, go football itself. Mm. And it was just so exciting. It was a different, different world altogether for now. But oh, what an amazing period. Well, in it's my like life. a religious movement, I would suggest, of sorts, because people live, die, breathe, oh, yeah. eat. And if you so want to talk about social cohesion, it mm. exists. Go, 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 go football, you mm. know. There's mm. no time to just sit, go disutung. You want to be there, go stadium, go di standing, and, and really just mingle with the people. Yeah, but this came via your reign as Miss South Africa. At the time, I would like to believe, when you were in the beauty competition yes. space and so on, that football was the last thing on your mind. Definitely. Maybe I'm wrong. No, you, you, you are absolutely right. Yeah. I um, never imagined, obviously I grew up in Mamilodi. Mm. Um, football was quite something at my house. My father being a staunch um, Orlando Pirates supporter, mm. my brother being Mamilodi Sundowns um, supporter. Mm. So d did I ever imagine myself working for the, for the club? No, but I've always grown, I mean, I grew up in, in a family where they truly supported um, football. football was a so passion during for them. during um, my reign as Miss South Africa, I had dreams for myself. I knew at some point I wanted to become a businesswoman. Mm. I wanted to do so many things. Even TV was part of it. But when I had numerous conversations with Mr. Patrice Motsepe about the brand, and I realized that football is a lifestyle, mm. and that's probably how I was hooked to the whole industry. Well. Football is football, passion, lifestyle, and all that. But there's Joan, and you learn about these things, and you have old dreams now that you wanted to realize in time. So how did you go about the whole process, the journey of transforming from some of the things that you probably got into accidentally, so mm -hmm. to speak, yes. and then the stuff that you went to intentionally? In this instance, the role that you play now, starting your own businesses and yes. creating things. Obviously, Miss South Africa was definitely intentional. It mm. was a dream of a young girl mm. since Skilly 13. I wanted, I saw myself as Miss South Africa. Yeah. Then, of course, I stepped into um, Sundowns, where I've learned, I've accumulated wealth of knowledge from just being a businesswoman and just being a leader in society. And, and therefore, it, everything that happened in my life, I felt like it was preparing me for bigger things in mm. life. So after sundowns, I then realized that I was ready to then build my own little business. And with 
all the knowledge that I've acquired from there, it was time for me to open up my own business. And I looked at it that it's important to also employ people. It's important to follow my dreams. I've made it very clear from a young age that cir my circumstances are not going to determine where I'm going. Uh, my parents allowed me the space to dream, to follow my dreams. All our siblings, we follow what we believe in and it's important that we do that. And that's exactly what I've done. Do I still have dreams? Absolutely. I want to be able to conquer, uh, go out of South Africa, go into Africa and ultimately the world. But here's my, here's my, yes. here's my point. I love dreaming. And I'm always excited when I talk to people who dream. Absolutely. But very few wake, have a up, plan. Yeah. wake up from the whole sleep that's putting you through the dream, have a plan to make it come alive. And of course, when you try, you're also faced with challenges. You know, you've got to oh, overcome all they? those trials and tribulations. Yeah, I, I think we must never expect that life is going to be smooth sailing. You mm. must expect challenges. Challenges, you grow from them. I experience my own challenges. When you start up a business, there's so many challenges. Mm. Um, number one, financial backup. Mm. Where do you go? How mm. do you put a business plan mm. together? Mm. All of those things are part of the challenge, but they are also a learning process. So it's very, very important to realize that here's a challenge, but I'm going to ensure that I learn something from it. So I think I'm the type of person who, I don't have a, a huge expectation in life because I say to myself, um, I'm going to face life, I'm going to face the day as it comes with all its challenges, but I need to overcome those challenges. I think I try and tell myself every day that I must overcome challenges and hence I've made it my mission that I go to the young girls in the townships all over the country and try and motivate them that you must dream, you must believe in yourself. But of course, like you were saying, you, your dream must also have, must go with a plan. You must mm. set up goals for yourself. What are the challenges that we're going through as young people in the country? Um, we've got this issue of blessers. How do we come together as a society and deal with, with such issues? So I've made it my mission with all the challenges, but we have to overcome all of them. Now, tell me about the women, the architects of society, your brainchild. What My is it brainchild. about that and how does I it I love work? it. I mean, I, goose, I get goosebumps every time I talk about this, this concept, Can I join? this movement. Oh, Absolutely. Sorry. Again, oh, Absolutely. Right. We need men to be a part of these kind oh, okay. of events yeah. so that they realize that we need each other, number one in life. And you also need to appreciate the role that a woman plays in society. Mm. We say that women are the architects of society. And why we say that, we are saying that women are the building blocks. So we are encouraging women that it starts from home, building your family. Mm. When you bring and an discipline and love and nurturing within your family, your family goes out into society, your children go into society being responsible, mm. being disciplined because it starts at home. And once, I believe once you've built a family, you are able to build a good, strong society. And of course, then you're building a country and the world at large. So women have a huge role to play, but we obviously need men to be a part of it. We need men to realize that we need to stop um, violence against women and children. It starts with those things. So. We need you to be part of our conversations, part of you know, our dialogue. People who make things happen and have had the great experiences, including the bad ones, but have turned them around and made things happen for themselves, they carry a lot of lessons. There are lessons to be drawn from there, right? Yes. I always like to take away something from them Absolutely. and say, of all the things you know, yeah. what would be the key lessons you have learned that you would share anytime with anybody and say, you know, yeah. through my life journey, these are the things I've learned. At least try one or two of them. They might work for you. I think the one that stands out all the time that I share with young people is you need to surround yourself with good people, people that are going to take you to the next level. You mm. need to have mentors. Mm. Mentorship is very, very important that you must never believe that you can achieve everything in life on your own. Mm. So you need to surround yourself with people that are going to take you to the next level. Mm, mm. Then the second one for me is never burn bridges. Mm. You know, um, wherever you go, make sure that when you leave, whether it's your previous job or whatever it is, make sure that you, you've left a good mark, mm. that people, even when they speak about you, they're not saying, oh, but that one. Mm. 
Mm. So it's very, very important to build good networks, have a mentor and never burn bridges because you never know if you're going to need that person in the future. So it's all about building relationships. And I've learned that as, as Miss South Africa at Sundowns, even today as a businesswoman, you, you call on people, you check on your cell phone, oh, but I have so-and-so, I can be able to call them and ask for a favor or a partnership. So it's very, very important. Um, somebody once said that your, your network is, is your net worth. Mm. So, so we need to remember that, that whatever you do in life, that you need to build strong relationships. Really? Okay, I've learned something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate it. Thanks Thank very you. much. Thank you. Thank you so for much. For spending Scalable. time with us. Scalable. And uh, we wish you everything of the Thank best. Thank you so much. Busy with so many projects. Yeah. But hey, energy Thank must you. be expended. Oh, right? absolutely. You can't just store it, use it. Absolutely. And uh, we appreciate your Thank time. Thank you so work. much. Scalable. Joan Ramokoshi Madibeng, former Miss South Africa and brand manager at Sundowns, and now the founder of uh, Women the Architects of Society and a host, a whole number of other things. I didn't go through all of them <laughs> because I was concerned we would not be able to finish <laughs> the conversation. But uh, we appreciate that you spent time with us. Thank and you. And we, so we hope that you learned something from uh, this conversation. I enjoyed it myself. And I uh, hope where you are, you are good too. Please join us again next time. Good night to you.